Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about how to find your main. Whether you're new to the league or have been here for a while and still haven't found the champion that clicks perfectly for you, by the end of this, you should be able to narrow down your search and find what's right for you. Why find a main? Okay, so before we get into how you can choose your main, we should probably go over why you need to in the first place. Look, I've been around the block a few times, I've played a lot of League of Legends, and I've seen enough OPGGs. I know that a lot of people don't think that having a main is necessary. You'll see people with over a thousand games not having more than 20 on a single champion. You probably even have a friend with this problem. They win four games in a row with the champion, but as soon as they lose, they feel like they gotta swap it up and play something else, or maybe they just get bored of champions very easily. The issue with that is that players like that will never find any sort of consistency. Just take a look at Summer's Rift. Riot has added a lot of features to it, but every game you're playing on pretty much the exact same map. The number of towers and their location are the exact same. Jungle camps are always in the same spot with the same spawn times. Minions spawn at the same time in the same pattern. The list could go on and on. The only RNG really comes from jungle plans and which dragons you get. But even though the map is so static, every game is all but guaranteed to play very, very differently than the last. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Why? Well, there's over 160 champions in the game now. There's basically an endless number of team comps that you can have on each team. Then you have to factor in individual player skills and play styles. Let's say that you have two different types of TF players. TF A plays really aggressively in lane and looks to roam whenever he can, even going for a bot lane gank as early as level 3. Later on, he's constantly moving around with teammates, using his ghost and RFC to make easy picks with yellow cards. TF B plays a very, very slow calculated game. He's focusing on CSing and only leaves lane with his ultimate. Later on, he's very heavily playing to split push, using his ultimate to escape danger or win fights with a numbers advantage. These playstyles have very different types of impact on the game and require the players in the game, both allies and enemies, to change up how they play to either work with or counter them. Now consider that you have to think about the different playstyles for everyone on both teams in every single game that you play, and it's very easy to see how the variables start piling up and determine how games play out in so many different ways. You could very easily take the exact same two comps, put them against each other several times in a row, and each match is probably going to be nothing alike. Having to constantly adjust to the different champs and playstyles you end up with and against in solo queue is hard enough on its own. But when you start swapping between different champs every game as well, well, you're just making it even more difficult. That's a lot more information that you need to learn. Even if you have the know-how, shifting gears can actually throw you off more than you realize. And the solution to this is pretty simple. Just find one main and stick to it. Doing this allows you to master your champion's mechanics, how it interacts with your other champions, and you should get a good understanding of its power curve. Once you've learned all of that inside and out, you'll really start to see how much more reliably you can perform in games. How to find your main. All right, now that you understand the why, it's time to talk about how to find your main. Of course, with so many champions on League of Legends roster, this process is an instant, and this video isn't gonna work as an exact matchmaker. Rather, this is just more of a way to push you in the right direction to find a champion or a few champs that suit you well. Okay, so the first thing to talk about for finding your main is recognizing that most players are drawn to some sort of broad category of champions. For example, if you have a support main that mains Janna, their other top played champions tend to be other enchanters like Nami, Sona, Lulu, and Soraka. If someone can play Jax, the other champs in their pool probably include Fiora, Camille, and maybe Irelia. It's really rare to find somebody that likes champions with really contrasting playstyles, like Zed and Seraphine, in their most played list. So, with all that being said, let's actually stick a label on the broad champion classes and give a loose definition for each one. Assassins. These types of champions typically rely on super high burst damage and mobility to eliminate squishy targets. Most of them play for picks or try to jump on foes at the back of fights, rather than just in the front to backing like most other carries. Bruisers. Champs in this class are generally durable and deal pretty good damage, but there are also definitely champions within the class that lean more one way than the other. Most bruisers can be placed in one of two subgroups. There are those that prefer split pushing and those that prefer team fighting later on. Enchanters. These are the true blue support style picks, with most of their worth coming from healing and shielding to keep allies alive in fights. Most of them also either provide buffs to amp up their carries or peel to keep them safe. 
Typically, they're pretty low impact early game, but scale super hard into team fights later on. Mages, casters that pretty much entirely rely on spells to either poke from afar or burst down enemies. Typically, mages rely on zone control, making them better in the jungle and river fights rather than being in big open spaces in the middle of the lane. Marksmen, ranger champions that generally rely on their auto attacks to dish out damage. There are some exceptions that are spell reliant, but for the most part, you're going to be right clicking a lot. These are usually the super high DPS late game damage dealers, but they're also pretty team reliant. Tanks, the thick, beefy boys. Most tanks have a good amount of CC to engage fights and disrupt the enemy team. Juggernauts, arguably the most broken class in League. Juggernauts are basically a perfect mix of bruiser and tank. They're super durable, but also deal a ridiculous amount of damage. They typically lack mobility, but that's easily made up for with the right summoner spells and build. Okay, so again, those are very broad basic classes. Not every champion is going to fall into just one. There's definitely a lot of overlap. Let's take Ziggs. He's a pretty basic control mage, so he works as our control. Then look at Morgana. Most of her kit is pretty magey, but her black shield also gives her a bit of an enchanterish vibe. Swain is another mage, but since he's so beefy, you'd say he's more of a bruisery battle mage, which, as the name implies, is a subclass of mages that really likes to get into the thick of things. And there's also a lot of variances in the classes. For Juggernauts, some lean more towards that tank aspect, like Dr. Mundo, while others are a little bit squishier but deal insane damage, like Darius. If you like what you see in this video, make sure you check out ProGuides.com. We're working on content like this, including guides for every single champion in the game, adding onto our already huge list of 500 masterclass courses put together by top level pros and streamers. A pro account only costs $9.99 a month, and since we only bill monthly now, you can just cancel anytime you want. That's already a pretty good deal, but to sweeten it even more, we decided that we'll be doing RP giveaways for subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a nice bag of 11,525 RP. Entering just takes three quick easy steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for a pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username down in the comment section below. You won't find a better deal anywhere, so what are you waiting for? Go pro now. Alright, let's get on with the video. So, how does this all play into deciding what you're going to main? Your first step is going to go back to review all those champ classes. Yeah, they're very broad, but that's just a first step in helping you narrow down your choices. Out of all of those options, what actually suits your abilities and play style the best? Look, everyone wants to be a shining star and pick up champions that look super cool, or copy what the pros do, but actually stop and review. If you're one of those guys that love to queue up top lane, pick Scion, then build Lethality, why not just actually pick an Assassin? If you're playing ADC but end up split pushing in most of your games, why not play Bruisers instead? It's a lot better to base what you pick on your playstyle rather than trying to force a pick to work with your playstyle. Once you decide on what class you think fits best, it's time to figure out what role you want to go with. We aren't in the early days anymore. In League of Legends early season, it was pretty rigid. Top laners and junglers were tanks and junglers, mid lane was for mages and assassins, bot lane was for ADCs, and most supports were just for enchanters. But nowadays, you can really find a champion of pretty much any class in each role. This is honestly probably the most difficult part. Playing top lane means that you're in the most isolated of any of the roles, so whoever gets a lead first can usually run with it. It's probably the best role if you want to be super aggro early on and force a lead 1v1. Jungling is probably the most stressful and thankless, but it's also the most influential on how the game plays out early. A bit of a double-edged sword. Mid lane has the most variance. There are great mid laners that do nothing but shove and perma roam, and then there are equally great ones that AFK farm and play to scale. It's probably the easiest role to play safe and scale on, since you're laning alone and have short lanes to work with. Bot lane is generally considered the role with the least amount of agency. This is mostly true as long as you're playing traditional ADCs, since most of them require support to set up plays, but that is usually heavily made up for by the crazy damage that they can pump out in the late game. Alternatively, you can just play a mage in this role and win lane for yourself anyway. Lastly, we have support. Contrary to what people say, support is a really complex role when looking at skill ceiling instead of skill floor. Supports have the most burden of setting up pace and the bot lane, trying to roam on good timers early, playing for vision in the mid to late game, and facilitating team fights. Again, these are just sort of broad guidelines to help you decide what you really want to play. Once you decide on the role that you think you'll do best in, it's time to actually pick your champion. To help answer these three questions of which class, which role, and which champion, you need to reflect on some basic personal preferences by asking yourself some questions. This list could go on for quite a bit, honestly, but some nice basic ones are, do I want to be a lone wolf or group up for team fights? Do I want to lead the charge? Do I want to be a damage dealer or can I go for more utility? Can I swallow my ego enough to pick a tank or enchanter? Do I want high risk, high reward or something more consistent but with less of an agency to carry? Here's a quick example of how I decided on my main a couple seasons ago. I have been messing around with different ADCs and really like the feel of playing Marksman, but I really hated how little say I had in how the lane played out and how even less I had in the rest of the map. 
I wanted something that could control the early game, which means that I'm immediately drawn to one of the two roles, jungle or support. There are early game champions in all roles, but those two can really affect how the whole map plays out. But there are no marksman support that really want to roam very much. Senna wants to stay bot lane to keep farming souls, while MF and Ash were both weak at the time of the support. And when you did want to pick them in this role, you really just wanted to plant yourself bottom to bully lane. Looking at my jungle options, I had Graves and Kindred. I'm personally just not a big fan of Graves. His damage output is awkward, and he feels like he can't parry really hard versus enemy teams that actually have decent front lines. Kindred, on the other hand, has everything else looking for. She's strong enough early that you can contest the enemy jungler in most games, and if you have a bad matchup, you can still path away from them and reliably pressure lanes. In team fights, she plays just like an ADC, kiting around and doing some crazy DPS. Now, obviously, with just this specific example, I was able to figure out what champion I wanted to try mating really fast because I only had two options to go with in the jungle. It may take you a lot longer to figure things out depending on how many questions you ask yourself and how many champions are left in the pool for you to decide from at the end. But like I said at the beginning, this video isn't supposed to give you an instant answer. It's more about giving you a push or even a little nudge in the right direction. Before we call it a day, I do want to say two things. First, fighting your main isn't about being a one trick for your whole league career. It's pretty important to be a well-rounded player. After figuring out your main, make sure you practice a few alternative picks in your main role, and one or two other picks in other roles for when you don't get your main role. You don't need to be as good at these obviously, but you don't want to straight up int when you don't get your comfort pick. Second, finding a main is all about finding the pick that you love to play. You won't be able to put a thousand games on something you find boring, right? But keep in mind, the whole reason that you're trying to find a main is to win more games. You probably don't want to main some champ that's chronically in the D tier for solo queues like Aphilios. No, I did, because I found him really fun. And I lose a lot of games. But also, he's cool. So, <laughs> anyway, that wraps up things for how to find your main. I hope this all helps you hone in on what you should be playing. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.